So hello there and welcome to another tutorial. My name is Henry Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over, well, searching through data sets. Uh, and so this time let's just say uh, we have a little data set uh, with a few people's names or movies names or uh, any data set. Now we want to search for something inside of that data set. Now I already know I have Swift Databases Part 2 on this, uh, which there will be a link to in the description, but this time it's a bit different. In Swift Databases Part 2 and also in this method, I have my own little package where I just essentially keyword search, uh, meaning I take the thing that you're searching for, uh, everything inside of the data set, and everything in the data set that contains what you're searching for will become a result. Now, I'm also doing it in this method, but there's a catch. I'm using a Levenstein string distance algorithm from osetascode.org in order to rank those final results and give it to you in order of relevance. And so, what's essentially going to happen, let's say you have a data set, like something like um, test Tanme Frank and Tester, just to show you how it works. Now, let's say you want to search for everything in this data set that has the word test in it. How would you do it? First of all, let's just say this is my function. Uh, my search function. Okay. Now what you need to give it in is a data set and something to search uh, or a search uh, search word I'll just write that a bit better so you actually understand that so it needs a search word what you want to search inside of that data set and then this function will output uh, a final array of results. So let's say you were to input this data set into the search function. This data set, sorry. And let's say you wanted to search for the word test. So this is what we're searching for. How would we do it inside of the search function now? Well, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go into each keyword. First of all, we're going to rank, well, actually determine, does test contain the word test? Yes, it does. So this is a successful candidate. Next, does tan may contain the word test? No, it does not. Does frank contain the word test? No, it does not. Does tester contain the word test? Yes, it does. Now, what can we do in order to see which one of these two elements is more relevant? Uh, and so, just as a little example, I can also put the word testing. Testing. And this would also be as well considered as a candidate uh, because it has the word test in it. Now, the thing is, how are we going to rank each individual word? Well, first of all, what we need to understand is we have to use the Levenstein string distance algorithm. And again, one more time, this is from rosettacode.org and there will be a link to it in the description. And so what happens is the Levenstein distance algorithm will tell us how many characters at minimum we need to change in a string to convert it into another string. For example, 
Uh, if I wanted to do testing and test, how many characters? Sorry, how many characters would I need to change in testing in order to get test? Well, we can easily see that if we were to remove ing, we would have test. This means three characters removed. That means it has a Levenstein score of three. And this means that the more score it has, the less likely it is. The less score it has, the more likely it is. And if it's a score of zero, it's spot on accurate. And so all we really need to do is create a dictionary, first of all, to actually an array in a dictionary. An array that says, OK, uh, there's test, tester, and testing. So let's just write these down. Test, tester, and testing. And then, in a dictionary, we will write their Levenstein scores. For test, it's 0. For tester, it's 2. And for testing, it's 3. We know it's 2 here because ER removed. That's 2 characters removed, and we get test. 3 characters removed, and we get test. Now, all we really need to do is rank the array, actually sort the array, because dictionaries can't be sorted, they're just completely random. Sort the array depending on their actual dictionary values. And that is least at the top, most at the bottom. And you're done. Display that in the UI table view, and you're done searching. And so, uh, theoretically, our app currently, if we give it this data set and we search for test, it will give us these three results in this exact order. So now that I've actually explained the algorithm to you, why not actually go to the Mac part and show you the code, a little demonstration, and then there will also be source code if you want to check it out in the description yourself. So without further ado, let's get straight to the Mac part. So welcome back to the Mac part, and now I'm going to actually give you a quick demo of the app, then we'll go to the code of the app and see exactly how it works. Again, we are using a custom string matching, uh, just a little if statement, and then we are using the Levenstein algorithm from rosettacode.org, uh, which will rank our results by relevance. Uh, so let's just search for, um, as you can see quickly though, uh, I have a UI table view with tons of movies names. I have a little text view over here where I can search for movies. So let's just say I wanted to search for the movie um, with the word sponge in it. Sorry, sponge. Uh, and as you can see, it gives us the two results, Sponge Out of Water and the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Uh, and the thing is, due to the fact that Sponge Out of Water has sponge but very few other characters it's saying this is more relevant because it's mainly sponge however since the spongebob squarepants movie has sponge but a lot of extra characters it's saying uh, maybe it's not that much sponge as it is others uh, and so uh, it's ranking that uh, next after sponge out of water uh, however if I were to search for something like the word uh, the as you can see, lots of movies have the word the in it, uh, and it gives us all of these movies' names. Uh, next, after the, uh, is another feature. This is case sensitive. So if I put uh, small t, it gives us these movies because they have a small t with their the. Uh, and so that's why it gives us these movies. And that's why, first of all, this is case sensitive. Uh, it will rank uh, by relevance as I said, uh, and it will use a custom search matching, meaning all results must contain this word in order to be able to uh, be ranked as a, uh, be made as a candidate. And that was a simple demo. And one more thing, if you were to remove everything from the text view and click on enter, it realizes that there's nothing in the text view and just resets the entire thing. Okay, so now let's actually get to the code of this app. As you can see, I've warped over here to the code. Let me just make this a bit smaller and move my face around. I don't want my face to be that big. And let's continue now.
So as you can see, first of all, this is the UI uh, over here in our main.storyboard file, right as it loads up. Sometimes Xcode takes a while. Okay. So as you can see, this is a text view, first of all. Pretty self-explanatory. Move this up a bit. Uh, this text view will uh, actually has a delegate to our view controller. No referencing outlet because we really don't need it. Uh, because when it's a delegate, we can just say, okay, text view did return, or it should return, uh, and it will give us the text view, uh, I mean field, uh, to get the text out of. Uh, so there's no IB outlet required here. However, for the table view, that's an entirely different story. We have a data source hooked up to our view controller, delegate hooked up to our view controller, and a referencing outlet uh, named table view hooked up to our view controller as well. Uh, now comes the coding co part of things, which is the harder part. And before I explain this class or anything else that I'm doing here, I just want to bring your atten attention sorry, uh, to one function called search it. Now, first of all, I don't need this code, so just delete this. Next, continuing, this is the search it function. You give it a list of strings and something to compare in that list of strings, and it returns a list of strings that it thinks, in relevance, uh, are uh, potential uh, things that the user is searching for. And the way this works is, first of all, we're defining this levdis function, which, again, I'm going to say this one more time, is from rosettacode.org. A link will be in the description and possibly on screen right now. Continuing. As you can see, we are first creating our finals string array. These are the final candidates, which will be then ranked by our Levin's giant distance algorithm. Next, what we're doing is we are looping through this entire list. Uh, which is the list that you gave us, which is the list of movies in this case. And what we're doing is we're checking if the current element we're on in the list contains the string that you're comparing to, then append this into our finals, meaning take it as a candidate. Next, create a finals int dictionary. And so what this is going to do uh, is this is essentially going to say, okay, this candidate has a Levenstein distance score of this much. And again, as I explained in the whiteboard, whiteboard part, the lower the Levenstein distance score, the better this result is. Meaning, the less characters are going to have to change in a string in order to get a string. That's why it's called the distance algorithm. And then what we're doing is we're looping through our finals, and we're saying, okay, in finals int, set this candidate's score to the Levenstein distance of compare versus uh, that, uh, that specific candidate. So we're getting the Levenstein distance of you, what you want to compare and the candidate and putting it into finals int for that candidate. Next, what we're doing is we're sorting finals in place, finals.sort in place, self-explanatory, by finals int uh, dollar mark zero less than finals int dollar mark one. So what this is doing is if this element, the first element over here, uh, is smaller than the second element over here, swap them. Meaning, uh, basically, all the smallest elements will come to the top of the array. And this way, we are sorting our results by relevance. And it's that simple. And then what we're doing is we are just returning our finals. And that's how the search it function works. Very simple, if you think about it. Uh, and it's just taking a list uh, and something you want to compare and returning an array of strings uh, of what it thinks uh, are good uh, results. That's the word I was looking for, results. Anyway, continuing now, let's just pretend that function isn't there. It's already predefined, even though I created it. Uh, it's just there now. Now let's actually go into the main part of the code, the view controller class. Now we know that this is the class view controller, which inherits from UI view controller, UI table view data source, UI table view delegate, and even UI text field delegate this time. So that we can actually get uh, input from the text field and see uh, when the user clicks on the return function. 
Next, as you can see, we have our IB outlet for our table view. We have our variable named data, which has this list of uh, movies. Uh, we have our temporary data, which will hold our search results for the UI table view. And then our just our normal view to load function. In our text field should return function, first of all, let me just tell you, we are just disappearing the keyboard if it's on. Uh, if the keyboard's up, bring it back down, force it back down on our view, meaning self.view.endEditing true meaning force. Then what we're doing is we're checking if our text field's text is not equal to nothing, meaning there's something inside of our text field. And so what this is going to do uh, is, if this is true, we will set our temporary data to the result of search it using our normal data and we're comparing the text field's text. Then we're reloading our table view and our table view will automatically adjust saying, okay, there's something inside of temporary data. This means that instead of loading normal data, I'm going to load temporary data. And that's how it works. However, else, if there is actually, uh, if there's nothing in the text field, we're just going to blank out the temp data and reload our table view and it's going to say, oh, there's nothing in the temp data, just use the data. That's it. And then, of course, we just return true as we always do with text field should return. Then in our table view number of rows in section function, we're just saying return and then an inline conditional, and we're checking if the if temp data's count is greater than zero, meaning there is something inside of temp data, then return temp data's count, or else return data's count. Meaning, if there is something in the search element, use the search result. If there is not, then just use the normal data. Then in our cell for our index path function, all we're really doing is we're taking our cell as a UI table view cell, setting its text labels text to again an inline conditional. We're checking if temp data has something inside of it. If it does, give temp data's index path dot row uh, element, or give data's index path dot row element if this inline conditional is false. Then we return the cell and then we finish our table view once it is all done. And so next, uh, what we're doing, actually that's pretty much it. Uh, so let's just revise here because that was a bit quick. First of all, we have a text view. The delegate is set to the view controller. When you enter something inside of it, we're using the search it function, which I've explained on the whiteboard and over here. We're using our movies uh, array list. We are comparing and we're giving it to compare the stuff that you entered in the text field. Then we're reloading our table view, meaning put the search results. Then once you put nothing into the text field, it'll clear out the search results, then reload our table view so that uh, it refreshes the normal data back in. And that is the simplest explanation, poss explanation possible for this search bar. And again, uh, I got this Levenstein distance algorithm from rosettacode.org. Uh, there will be a link to it in the description below. Uh, and that was actually pretty much it. Again, this is an extension to Swift Databases Part 2. Uh, and because there I did explain a quick search bar, but this is just extending off of that and making the search bar much better. Uh, in the other search bar, I just compared. Here I'm comparing and ranking. And that's pretty much it for this video. Again, if you like this video or it helped you in any way, please make sure to like this video. Uh, and again, if you're new to my channel or you like my content and you want to see more of it, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, it does help out. Uh, and apart from that, you can even follow me at Tajimani on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle will be in the description below if you can't spell that. Uh, you can leave comments down below for any questions, ideas, tips, app ideas, science, math, pretty much anything. Uh, you can even email me at tajiman at gmail.com with any of these stuff I just said, or even a video question of you saying something, and I might just feature it in my next video. And that's going to be it. Goodbye.